Hello, everybody. You know, I was just sitting here uh, processing some raw images that I shot yesterday uh, up in the mountains. Uh, you can actually take a look at my Flickr page, I'll post it right here, um, of just some fall leaves and stuff up, up in the mountains where I live. Uh, pretty nice, pretty nice images. Not the best, but I'm trying. Anyway, uh, this is what, another one I was working on. And I got thinking, uh, you know, hardly anybody I know, my, my uh, friends, my family, uh, you know, they don't, uh, they don't shoot in RAW. They probably don't even know what RAW is, and uh, most of them, you know, and uh, they, they don't know what's involved or, you know, they think it's way out of their league. They would have no idea where to start, what to do. And so I thought I would go through, uh, you know, just exactly the steps you would need to take to take a raw image, something that you cannot, you really email or post on the web, but take that raw image and adjust it how you want it, process it, and then turn it into a JPEG file, like the file that comes out of your camera. So. This is really just taking all the data that your camera saw when you took the picture and adjusting it a little bit and then compressing it into a JPEG file. But the, a JPEG file that you like, not just hoping for the best, but you know, turn it into... This is just how to get better pictures. It's pretty much if you want to get better pictures and get the best pictures you can, you probably ought to look into shooting raw. It's just, uh, you know, how it goes. It's a good way to do it, and it's really not that hard. So here's an example of uh, taking an image and doing just that. It just takes a second. So the first step would be to open up, you know, open up your uh, Lightroom or the software that came with your camera and uh, a lot of them will auto detect but you can import the photos I imported all these photos I shot yesterday along the bottom here and I just highlighted this one and it comes up here so at any time you can just click on it it'll blow it up to 100 percent you can check and make sure your focus is right and, and uh, you know take a look around a little bit and over here there's a live histogram so you can kinda get an idea of where you sit now you can see that even right out of the camera, the sky is very, very nice and blue. That's because I used a circular polarizing filter. And I kind of wish I hadn't, I wish I had one that I didn't use it on so I could show you a trick, but I'll show you anyway. But first, uh, just to show you how easy it is to take a raw file. Now this is a file that you cannot view, you can't post it to the web or anything. You have to turn it into a JPEG. So you could go ahead and just turn this into a JPEG without any doing anything to it if you wanted to. But the better way is probably to take a look at your white balance. Now as shot is, uh, I know I used auto, so you can just take a look around. Um, how about flash? No, I don't think I like that. How about cloudy? Eh, a little bit too, too bright. How about daylight? Now that just kind of warms things up a little bit. You can see there before and after. That's what cloudy or uh, daylight white balance will do. So white balance is a, is a big reason why a lot of people shoot in RAW. You can adjust that, you know, after the fact. Another thing is exposure. You know, I, you, uh, you sometimes will want to adjust that. Just for the sake of this video, I'll go ahead and bump it up a little bit. And then there's recovery fill light, blacks, you could, you know, adjust any of those. Brightness, put a little bit of contrast in it. And then this clarity, vibrance, and saturation are very useful tools too. Now in this image, this specific image, it really doesn't need much more, uh, more, much more saturation. So, uh, you know, this is just for the sake of this video to show you what, uh, what you can do. So those three things are at the end of this, uh, of this basic, this basic uh, little module they have here. 
that is most most of the time that's really the about the only stuff you're going to need to worry about so if you take a look at our before and after there's half the picture you know you can look at it several different ways um, you know it's, it's a lot more bright colorful it, it just looks uh, looks really good um, another uh, really cool trick is in this HSL uh, tab right here and I'll show I'll show you what you can do in that if you open it up and click luminance and then click this little tool right here a lot of people um, if you don't if I hadn't used a circular polarizing filter this sky would be not really blue but it it may even be yellow and really really light so you can just click on this and drag your mouse down see how that darkens that you could you can darken it clear to there I mean it's a, a really good way to do that and you can do that with any color I could grab on green and drag it down as well and it'll it'll uh, adjust those colors so it's an amazing tool um, that's a really cool little feature So there's, uh, there's that. And another thing you could also do is some sharpening. And just sharpening and detail. These, uh, these three or four little uh, options here. And in this one, there's also a noise reduction. So if you shot at a high ISO or whatever, you can uh, mess around with that a little bit. And that's really the extent of it. That's, uh, that's as much as most people are ever going to do. There are a lot of other options you can mess with, including um, these little options up here. One of them is cropping, red eye. You can paint on any number of things into any area of the image. So there's a lot of tools in here you can use. So anyway, I'll close that. And here's kind of a before and after um, here's the image we made out of this um, you know I don't I don't think I would actually do this I did this for the sake of this video but you can see how you could just tweak it a little bit and bring just a little bit more color out this I did it in I did a lot of it to, to make the point but you can see that your picture you took is going to be quite a bit different from the picture your friend took or even what you know what most people take if you do a little bit of post processing so that's Lightroom 3 uh, it's uh, it's not too hard it's uh, pretty easy to use and it uh, works well and and by the way when you get done uh, doing this all you need to do to turn it into a JPEG is go to file and export and you have a few options here like where to put it how to name it what to turn it into like a JPEG the quality of it the uh, resolution of it you know in case you're printing it or you're just putting it on the web or sending it in an email and then a couple other options and then you just hit export that's all there is to it and then you'll have a JPEG file right here in this uh, in this folder where you told it to go and that's it so that's how you would go from beginning to end so that's probably not as hard as you thought and once you do it a couple of times it'll be just like second nature and you won't be able to wait to get home and, and uh, adjust those pictures and make them just how you want them so you can show all your friends and family and stuff it's it's uh, really not that hard and you can actually take uh, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of pictures that you took uh, you know at a certain place in a certain light and batch process them so you can uh, you can apply all those settings that we just went through to 20 different pictures uh, you can also copy those settings and when you come across another picture that you took at the same place you can just paste them to that to that image so you don't even need to spend that much time on every image you really only need to do it uh, once in a while for for the uh, different lighting conditions and stuff that you take pictures in 
So if you went to a party and you took 50 pictures at that party and you really want to keep uh, 10 of them, you just take those 10 and apply the same settings to all of them. They're probably all in the same light and uh, then you'll get a lot better pictures than you would have had otherwise. And then you can even you can even uh, delete the, the raw file so it doesn't take up room on your hard drive. You can do whatever you want. It's just a really good way. It's how the professionals do it and it's how uh, people who get really, really good pictures all the time and it just seems like they're good photographers they are doing this stuff and uh, you know that's just all there is to it that's just how they do it so it's a good tool Lightroom's a good tool there are other programs uh, you can even use the program most likely that came with your digital camera I know Canon sends it out with theirs and I'm pretty sure Nikon does as well uh, and Sony and Pentax and and all the different manufacturers I'm pretty sure they have their own software but if they don't um, you, you, you can find software it, it's out there this is very good uh, Lightroom 3 by Adobe very very good software um, but it is a couple hundred dollars you know two or two hundred and fifty dollars so it's up to you but I thought I would just show you that's what's involved you guys have a great day Keep shooting. We'll talk to you next time.